Good day to you. Good to see you all again. Hope you're all well and that you've enjoyed um, the last episode. Uh, Last time I spoke to you a bit about the amygdala, the anxiety response and how that can affect your gut. Um, We'll go through some of those things again, but today we're going to focus particularly on trauma. Um, Now, trauma is one of those things that's um, very open to perception and I think unfortunately for many of us we tend to um, frame trauma as kind of like you know that whole thing about being in the military having had a really sort of awful experience there being blown up in combat or you know something that's very traumatic in our minds would be something like a car accident or childhood abuse but actually trauma can be a whole plethora of things to to us as humans, especially if it happens during childhood. And once there has been a trauma, um, we get stuck in that perpetual state of trauma because of the way the amygdala is heightened. Um, And when the amygdala is heightened, as I said to you uh, last time, I gave you a a brief example of, um, you know, an older brother or sister throwing a spider at you, the spider lands on you, you see the spider, you scream, and then you have that hypervigilance to the spider. But imagine if that's a trauma. Imagine if you witness a a dreadful car accident or imagine if you've grown up in a household where your parents have either been alcoholics or very, very depressed and not present for you. And so as a result of that, you've gone through lots of different traumas or childhood abuse, bullying at school. Um, All manner of things can be considered very traumatic. And I want to make that clear. If I haven't mentioned something that you feel was very traumatic for you growing up, then the fact that you feel that it was traumatic, it means that it was. So what happens? We get stuck in that perpetual state of trauma. The amygdala will stay heightened. And when the amygdala is is set off, if you like, because of the perceived threat, because of the stress, I mentioned some of the physiological responses to um, anxiety in a moment. But what we didn't talk about was the nervous system. We have the autonomic nervous system. Um, And let's just look at the two parts. There's the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. Now, the sympathetic nervous system kicks in um, when you need it to, uh, when you need to fight and and all of that. And the parasympathetic nervous system is the more calming aspect to our nervous system. Um, When we have experienced a trauma, we stay perpetually in the fight flight. Um, even if we don't know it, it can be unconsciously happening. We don't know that we're, you know, more focused, for example, on certain things than other people. So if your, um, you know, life was scary as a child, if you were abused in childhood, if you were constantly exposed to some sort of violence, then you're going to look out for violence unconsciously without even realising it. And the way the brain works is if you focus on something, um, you actually build through repetition neurological pathways around that thing that you focus on. Um, So we have these neural circuits going on that are all built around the trauma. So the more you think about it or the more you think about things that are scary, the more you focus on the thing, whatever that thing is, the more you're hardwiring those neural circuits in your brain. So there we have a problem. Um, Our whole nervous system is, if you like, on fire. We're going through the anxiety response. We get used to that. So it becomes the norm. And also we're building these neural circuits, which are hardwiring our beliefs um, and our behaviours in to our brains. So with that being said, um, the trauma response is, is huge. And so many of us are in it. And so many of us are doing things to avoid uh, certain situations without realising it Um, and when we avoid certain situations um, it's just as bad as focusing on certain situations because by avoiding it uh, that thing gets scarier because we haven't got the experience of it anymore and so the anxiety around just the thought of it can kick off the whole system again. So what we have to do is we have to understand the trauma, we have to go back to the traumatic episode, we have to reframe it Now, as a clinical hypnotherapist, um, I usually use the deep relaxation accompanied by, in a safe space, um, accompanied by reframing the event. Um, When you apply visualisation, emotion and intent, you change 
your energy. When you change your energy and when you work on changing, reframing, restructuring, distancing yourself from thoughts, diffusing thoughts um, and focusing on the new reframe, you, you calm your whole system down. And when you calm your whole system down, there are physiological benefits. I mentioned before in the last um, episode that anxiety and stress create an acidic environment for your body. And I mentioned also earlier on in this episode, the autonomic nervous system. Now, there's another part of that nervous system. There is a theory called polyvagal theory. And um, the, the theory itself suggests that there's another part to the nervous system and that part is the social engagement system. Um, So we have to now take into account that part as well because there's a lot of evidence to back that up and in clinical practice our work on body awareness, thought reconstructing, visualisation and graded exposure techniques which means you're, uh, for those that have become avoidant, you're building up their ability to cope with situations rather than throwing them in to the fire, as it were. So let's look at the parasympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, and now the social engagement system. So we really want to hit all of those areas. We really want to calm the whole body, distance the mind from the thoughts, reframe the initial traumatic event. Interestingly enough there, on that point, Memory, and this is a fact, is 50% what actually happened and 50% perception, which is why it's so important to reframe the traumatic event from the adult's point of view, especially if it happened in in childhood. And even if it happened a year ago or two years ago, we can still do that because perception is 50% of memory. So it's really important to bear that in mind when we're doing the reframe work. Now, why is it important to do all of this work? Because, as I mentioned before, the vagus nerve is between the brain and the gut. So of course, not only are we creating an acidic system and an inflamed system through the release of certain stress hormones and chemicals, but the vagus nerve itself is massively important. I mean, it's known as the 10th uh, cranial nerve and the brain and the gut share many, many nerves. So there's a lot of communication between the two. And if um, someone is experiencing a lot of stress, really affects the bacteria in the gut, the flora in the gut. And so we have to really look at doing all of that psychological work in order to help you have a better, healthier gut as well. So if you're somebody that experiences um, stress-related IBS, if you have um, IBS related to hormones, so a lot of women just before their Uh, menstrual cycle experience a lot of IBS symptoms and it's because of the um, increase in progesterone and sorry decrease in progesterone and increase in estrogen Um, and that can affect the rest of the hormones and the stress hormones which then affects the gut so it's really important to use the calming techniques now as a clinical hypnotherapist I do that with my patients in clinic but you can use meditation you can use body awareness techniques, so sensory techniques. Now, the reason the sensory techniques are so important is because of the connection of the ventral vagal nerve to the middle ear. So the middle ear is really important in terms of um, auditory and balance. So by doing lots of sensory work around um, sound um, and also sensory work around balance. Um, You see with children that are really sort of um, stressed, they really like these squidgy things that they can squidge and hold on to. They find it really comforting at times of stress. Um, We used to have stress balls and they're actually really effective alongside a lot of the other techniques. So we're looking at calming techniques, breath work. I mentioned the breath work in the last episode in regards to anxiety in the gut Um, and I'll repeat it now. That Uh, breath work to practice daily if you can for five minutes in a quiet place with your eyes closed is breathing in for four seconds, pausing the breath for four seconds and breathing out for four seconds. Practicing that for five minutes a day, every day, 
really helps to calm the system. And you can extend that with meditations. You can see a clinical hypnotherapist like myself who will do the added uh, analytical work with you and build the visualizations with you. There's so much that you can do uh, with a therapist, but you can also do so much on your own. You can find really good meditations online. Um, so we're looking at how to calm the whole system. We've talked about those sensory things that we can do. We've talked about going to see a therapist. We've talked about the breath work. We've mentioned that you can learn how to distance yourself from your thoughts. We've mentioned that you can reframe the trauma. Now, all of these things, including the things I mentioned in the last episode, the breath work, exercise to increase endorphins, which are natural stress busters, um, saying no more if you're overwhelmed because people that have experienced a trauma are already on that hypervigilant state. Like I said, we can get stuck in that perpetual state of trauma. Um, you may be experiencing flashbacks with that trauma, which means that you're reliving that because the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So doing all of those things really helps with trauma work. I would always advise going to see a therapist if you're really struggling um, because actually having that one-to-one, -one, having that personalised approach really, really helps. But these things are available online and you can always DM or leave comments um, and I can always help you a bit further if you need that extra help. So working on your trauma responses, working on those sensory issues, cognitive distancing and diffusing, reframing, it all really helps with the gut because of the way the gut responds to stress and anxiety. Hopefully that's been insightful. I hope you had a pen and paper so that you could note down some of those things that I've spoken about today. Education and elevation of your mind is so important in looking after your overall health. On that note, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a lovely day.